picture. You know, for 25 years, I've been doing this, preaching the gospel of economic liberty, trying to make folks understand the most productive and moral thing you can do is work. That without production, there can be no consumption. There can be no charity. There can be no anything. So instead of embracing the politics of envy and the tired old class warfare by tearing down the successful, the most productive, we ought to appreciate the great minds that have come before us and given us the conveniences of life. My friends, instead of apologizing for our achievements, can we not just once take pride in them? I'm Jason Lewis, back after this. Jason, you've got a production meeting and sales needs something. And answer your emails. Don't roll your eyes at me. A lot of people depend on you. And your accountant called, says he can meet with you after the show. And don't forget your debate with Howard Dean later this week. First the IRS, then Howard Dean. Other than that, how was the play, Mrs. Lincoln? Hey. What is it with you and uh, taxes anyway? Well, you see, my dear, what they forcibly take from me and give to other people to whom it does not belong, well, we used to call that theft. They wouldn't need a law if people wanted to give their money away. It's either my money or it isn't. And if it's not, I'm not free. Come on, don't you think the system's fair? In college, my professor said it was all for the greater good. Yeah, I'll bet he did. That's what the people who get the money always say. Look at this face. Don't you think I deserve it? <laughs> it's a great face, but it's not paying taxes. Let me tell you how it will be There's one for you, 19 for me Cause I'm the tax man Yeah, I'm the tax man Mr. Lewis, how's it going my proud taxpayer? I could be just as proud for half the money Come on. We go through this every year. Yeah, and every year, my friend, I end up paying more. Paying your taxes is the price of civilization. Somebody's getting a whole lot of civilization, but it's not me. I'm pretty sure that you've heard about all those audits going around lately. I think you should just be happy that you're not on that list yet. Are you working for me or the IRS? I think you're doing pretty well, so I think that you should just pay your fair share. Uh, what I'm doing is immaterial. Every year, your idea of fair share means a few taxpayers pay the entire bill, while a whole lot of people don't pay their fair share. Is that fair to you? Are you one of those one percenters? <laughs> the evil one percenters. Mm -hmm. But one of these days, they're not going to be around to tax. Well, maybe you haven't heard, but um, welfare, it actually stimulates the economy. Mm -hmm. At whose expense? Nobody's. Nobody's, really. You just print the money. Oh yeah, we're doing that, aren't we? It's called $18 trillion in debt. Somebody's got to pay. There is no such thing as a free lunch. And my lunch pail is empty right now. Have you checked the Dow lately? <laughs> the Dow's doing just as well as housing did in 2008. How's that working for you? Who was president in 2008? <laughs> Who cares? It doesn't matter. It's a bipartisan problem. The problem we've got here is people are redistributing this country right into a recession. And sometime, at one point, somebody's going to say, I've had enough, and they're not going to get taxed anymore because there's not going to be anybody to tax. But the bottom line is, whose money is it? It's not just one big village. It's the people who earn it. It takes a village. Not in my town. You know, we're getting to a tipping point here where the people who are producing the wealth are going to go out on strike, and there's not going to be anything to tax. You know, we had a bit of a revolution about that in this country. Just write them the check. <sighs> Don't forget Howard Dean tomorrow. Uh, I've been trying to forget Howard Dean. Oh, and the network brass wants to see you ASAP. Lovely. You know, you'd be a lot easier to deal with if you just learned to play ball, Jason. The only deal I'm concerned with is putting out a good product. And last time I looked, we had a pretty successful show. No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Your show is doing fine, but it could be doing better if you just toned down the whole leave us alone bit. You know, we're a community which includes big companies, and government, 
and we need to work together, not <laughs> fight it. <laughs> What's the matter? The collectivist crowd at the FCC getting some complaints again? Well, come to think of it, more progressively minded people and groups have been contacting the censors, and, I mean commission, and you are well aware that this network can't afford to be on the wrong side of those folks. <laughs> Boy, you people are kind to yourselves. Does my show make money for this network? Yes. Well, then what is so progressively minded about kowtowing to a bunch of bureaucrats and running away from government censors, which I would think in the end would get a bit tiring? We live in this community, which means that we need to get along with certain groups, such as nonprofits, charities, and other social... Uh, the usual suspects, huh? No, what it means is you want to be popular at the cocktail party. And we are back. Pro golfer Phil Mickelson has got it pretty good, wouldn't you say? 42-year-old guy has made more than $67 million in career earnings since turning pro in 1992. But apparently Mickelson has it rough. He thinks he's getting shortchanged. Speaking to reporters on Sunday, Mickelson said, you know, changes in the tax code have really got him rethinking his next move. He says if you add up all the federal uh, and you look at the disability and the unemployment and Social Security, and state, my tax rate is 62, 63 percent, so I've got to make some decisions on what to do. It still sounds like a good deal for a gig playing golf, don't you think? So, Phil, did you really build that? <laughs> Can you believe that? You know what you call that? Living proof we haven't won the war on drugs. How pathetic. I don't care whether it's Phil Mickelson or some ditch digger. It's his money, it's his labor, it's his life. Nobody owns it. Yeah, I don't understand why they're so mad at him. Well, they're mad at him because nobody believes in individual rights anymore. They think if somebody's successful, you can put a bullseye on their back and take whatever you want. The irony of it all is capitalism was the whole purpose of the American dream, a place where you could go to get rich. Now everybody hates them. You know what would be great? If you just quit. Then they wouldn't have anything to take away. Maybe that would make him think twice. Yeah. Yeah, it would at that, wouldn't it? More you make, more they take. Never seem to get ahead. Break your bag just to pay your tax. And you don't like the way that it's spent. Somewhere back to jump the track isn't what the government yeah. But for now, made a hundred foul <laughs> I ain't saved a dime The IRS came out best They got the money every time it Can't be fair when the millionaire Never has to give them a cent A sad Testing one, two. We can no longer afford to leave the hard choices for the next budget. And we're 30 seconds out? The next administration or the next generation. That was President Obama earlier explaining why we need to make cuts to the budget. And Can you still cuts. hear the anchor okay? Are they a good start or are they just chump change? Joining us now, former Vermont And we're governor live in three, two, one. Dean. Good to see you, Governor. And we also have Jason Lewis, radio host of The Jason Lewis Show. Jason Lewis, I want to start with you. Is this enough? This is a joke. I mean, we've got a $800 billion stimulus plan. We've got a 2010 budget blueprint that triples the debt, takes spending to 25% of GDP, the president could have done away with earmarks in the 2009 omnibus plan. There are three opportunities he could have carved into real spending cuts. And we're talking about $17 billion, which is less than the amount of earmarks in a given year. Uh, Governor Dean, Jason Lewis uh, says it's chump change. What do you think? I, I think he's wrong. Uh, it's a good start. Uh, it's not a lot of money uh, by federal budget standards. It's a great deal of money by uh, most of our standards. Uh, it's a decent start, uh, and uh, oddly enough, it's ex almost exactly what George Bush tried to cut and was turned down by his own Republican Congress. I, I don't think so. I don't think the vast majority of Americans are tired of substituting bailouts for bankruptcy. They understand that politicians invest for a political return. Capitalists invest for an economic return. We need a bit more capitalism back in the economy. I think we had quite enough capitalism in the last eight years. I think we need some regulation now. 
Good debate. I'm sure we're going to discuss it again. Thank you, Governor Dean and Jason. Here's the power plan. Can you believe that guy? I think we had quite enough capitalism in the last eight years. I think we had quite enough capitalism in the last eight years. I think we had quite enough capitalism in the last eight years. Well, Mr. Mysterious Car Driver, what do you think of capitalism? Well, without capitalism, I wouldn't have this car. Without this car, I wouldn't have a business. Without my business, I wouldn't have the freedom to create a better life for my family. I think it's the only economic system consistent with liberty. Yeah, I know. Mr. Right. Jason, Mr. your accountant's on line one. We got a strong team. Jason Lewis. Jason. Jason. Hey, looks like we owe him a bit more. Ready to fight yeah, we didn't take into account those tax hikes last year, but it's no big thing. You know, write another check now and there won't be any penalties. No big thing? Well, it is now. I won't be needing your services any longer. You're fired. All over the continent of Europe, there are castles. Castles that children are taught to admire. But these monuments are not shrines to liberty, but a stark reminder of an oppressive past that we are quickly forgetting. You see, these elaborate fortresses were built to honor the riches of royalty. But such wealth was not derived from the cooperation of capitalism, but from the conquest of collectivism. It was stolen through taxes and fees collected from the serfs. It was not earned. We have apparently learned little from history, for today we have our own royalty dressed up in the robes of compassion, a false altruism that merely enables the mob to crush the individuals. We have erected a shrine. It's called the welfare state, and as a result, we now have more takers than makers in this country. Crony capitalists who preach the virtue of community service while acting like economic parasites who live off the system. Indeed, the real entrepreneurs today are no longer valued. Only the political ones who loathe them. Profit is a dirty word. While one's obligation to society relegates the most productive to second-class status. We are, it seems, endlessly told to live for others. That taxes are patriotic. To apologize for our own existence. The pursuit of happiness has been replaced by the mandate of self-sacrifice. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not freedom. It is tyranny. And so we are faced with a choice, a choice that all people in all times must make, to fund the beast or to starve the beast, to host the parasite or to walk away, to participate in a system that punishes the value of your own existence or to boycott it. Well, for me, I've chosen not to be a sacrificial lamb any longer. I choose the latter. They can now feed off one another. I quit. Uh, Jason, Jason, what are you doing? Whoa, whoa, where are you going? Uh, you just can't leave, we're on the air, Jason. Jason, what are we supposed to do? Jason, what am I supposed to do? What, what about the network, the affiliates? Sales need spot cuts, people depend on you. What, what are we supposed to do? Oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do? What are we gonna do?